This is about you. The infinite you. The part of you that can't be seen, can't be smelled, touched, or tasted. But you know you feel it. Who you really are. In a world lost to confusion, a universe that's partly illusion, when we look for meaning, we often simply find more delusion. Ground your consciousness in the sounds of the universe, a podcast about your true omnipotence. There's a universe inside each of us, but our beliefs keep us constrained to the edges of what we can imagine. The Innerverse Podcast is your portal to that infinite realm of ideas. I'm Chance Garden and I'll be your host as we serve up inspirational sound waves from the brightest minds with the highest vibes. And we keep searching for the empowering perspectives we need to create our greatest masterpiece of all. Our lives. Welcome to the one within all to the Innerverse podcast. I'm your host, Chance, but in truth, that's just the temporary name given to my flesh covered spacesuit while I explore this density layer of the Omniverse. And the reason I've incarnated in this strange dimension with you is to honor the ineffable, indescribable something that lives in the heart of nothingness. Some call it spirit, others say great mystery, but because names are only able to define things with limitations, there's really no correct nomenclature for the infinite source energy that generates all things. That same energy inspires me, it inspires you, and it inspires our amazing guest today, who is back in the saddle for a second deep dive into the heart of all things. He's the legendary tryptamine mystic and visionary digital artist known as Hakan Hissim. If you caught his first appearance on the show back in May of 2018, you know what a wild ride you're in for as we pierce even further past the veils of illusion and explore the sometimes dizzying realms of truth beyond the constructs of time and space. This incredibly masterful metaphysical stage is back to take us on yet another awe-inspired examination of the fractal mirror that is the living cosmos. In our first transmission, we talked about Hakan's personal background, some of his incredibly intense psychedelic experiences on plant medicines like DMT, ancient aliens and future computers, xenolinguistics and entity contact, and a lot more. If you haven't checked that one out, I do highly recommend it, and I recently put out a remastered version of that call. Today, we're going to be examining the cosmic being that we all live in in an even more scrutinizing way and deconstructing demonic aspects and self-dividing dilemmas that many of us face in this dimension with the as above, so below blueprint in hand that allows us to unify our inner polarity and find lasting balance. It's definitely what you would call an adept level or adult conversation. And also, I want to shout out to the fellow secret energy tribe that might be tuning into Interverse today, possibly for the first time. Wholeness and harmony to you and infinite thanks for connecting with us. But before we begin, I urge you to take a look at Hakan's incredible artwork at hakanhitsim.net and universal-transmissions.net, where you'll find these absurdly beautiful eye candies and tons of products to adorn your personal space with, and these psychedelic creations will leave you speechless by their beauty, uniqueness, and symbolic layers of meaning. So check the show notes for all you'll need to find Master Hakan online and look him up on social media so you can show this great man some love because he's reflecting so much heartfelt care through the creation of his crafts that all of us who seek to live in unity consciousness owe our thanks to this human beacon of the true clear light of source. You can also find the links to Interverse Plus in the show notes where you'll be sure to want to sign up and hear the full two-hour version of this conversation by becoming a member and supporting this podcast. 
Although I could talk all day about the magical mind of our friend Hakan here, we have an enormous amount of content to cover that may not even fit into one episode, thanks to our guest's generous and meticulous note-taking and deep contemplation about so many empowering yet occulted topics. So, we'd better get started. Just to make sure that we are fully aligned with the greatest capital T truth that we can be, and because we humans so easily drift between remembering and disconnection, take this moment to resonate with the real fact that all is self, and our life is our creation, and our potential is truly limitless when we realize and release the self-imposed blocks and channel fully powered heart energy into loving ourself and our tribe. Hakan, my man, today's 420, and I've been dreaming of this chat for months. It is my great honor to have you here today. And I thank the ancestors for providing the framework and joining us in to this powerful time of integration and wholeness. Interverse Tribe, please join me in sending a telepathic package of loving appreciation to Hakan for joining us today. Thanks so much for being here, man, and welcome back to the Interverse. Thank you, brother. Well, wow, that was uh, an amazing intro. It's lovely to come forward again here with you in this space to share and create and talk about ideas and concepts that not many people get into. Uh, so, yeah, it's, uh, it's a great honor and pleasure to be here with you once again. <laughs> Definitely the honor is mine for sure as well. It's always been something that I've been wanting to do since we talked the first time. One of the most fully deep reaching chats I've ever had in my life. And I've been doing a lot of chats here. <laughs> I don't want to call things my favorite because that's part of like the division mentality that even causes problems. But I will say it was epic. And those of you who haven't heard it yet, it would be a great place to start because although we're not going to be going out of our way not to cover any of the same ground, I doubt that we will because this is a spirit led transmission right here. And we've been talking offline through email for a while about one thing in particular, many things overall, but what's really got on my mind at this point is the cult of luxury and the false light. Can you tell, tell us a little bit about that to get us warmed up? Yeah. Um, well, recently I've been meditating and contemplating on the idea of, of the, the nature of light and optics and contemplating actually on a lot of the, the my DMT experiences that I've had in the past. And I started realizing this sort of pattern that a cult that is that's like being throughout the ages of time memorial, not just on this earthly plane, but in uh, various other dimensions. And uh, the reason I call it luxury is uh, luxury is, comes from lux, which is uh, which means light as well as luxury. And the main idea behind this is that these beings that I've encountered have sort of like, uh, I don't know if you've been in the DMT space, but there is, there's this vibe of being entranced and sort of enchanted by visual, uh, phenomena. And, uh, there's, there's an explosion of this absolute gorgeous visuals and things going on constantly. But it's after a while, it sort of, it seems shallow. Well, it seems shallow to me after, I, after uh, a, a lot of repetition. And I found that what was going on was uh, these beings were sort of offering uh, visual delights, different forms of, you can say, hedonism and just optic programming as a, a shortcut to ultimate gnosis, which they purport or what uh, purported as ultimate gnosis of like, um, for example, sacred geometries and different geometrical setups. And uh, I mean, all of these are wonderful, but all of this seems to bypass the main part as aspect of of understanding of, of a real consciousness. And what I mean by real, real consciousness is the, is actually the, the toroidal energy field of the heart. And uh, this is where, this is not to be confused with the emotions. The heart consciousness is 
I think the, where the, the seat of the soul is, uh, it's where the, uh, we resonate from, where true love and understanding and wholeness and, and uh, unity with the, the entire uh, multiverse and universe is. And it seems like this, this ob obfuscation, um, I guess you can call it, that these beings seem to, uh, to do is to distract us from, from actually feeling our way to, no, to gnosis, like distraction from intuition, but rather something that's put upon us like a spell, like something that's shown us, it uses our, uh, our optic senses. And more things that I've realized was that, uh, like there's a saying, that, uh, it's a, quite a, a, a very, widespread saying like love and light and i i was thinking about this and, and i was thinking that love doesn't always equals equal light light is something quite different from love light is something that that shines in the darkness and something that something that shows the way but love is the understanding uh, or inner standing if you will of of what true being existence is and uh, I think we we sort of jumble and mix them up together and and sort of make the meaning the same where they're, they're quite separate and different. This uh, cult of luxury that I've, I've been calling it is, I think it's a Luciferian uh, type of, of archetype, this energy. And um, not to confuse it with a satan satanic, which is completely different. I, I believe that the, the satanic force is maybe the the negative polarity or the uh, the, uh, the negative polarity of the Saturnian energy. Life negating in a way, whereas yeah. Luciferian doesn't negate life; it actually just like feeds off of it. Yeah, exactly. It it feeds life. It feeds off of life. It also illuminates life. Uh, but this Luciferian, there's two parts to, sometimes three parts to many as aspects of things. And this Luciferian archetype also has positive aspects as well as negative aspects. But I feel this cult is sort of, is sort of based around the negative aspects of, of life as in trapping the subconscious, the conscious of the soul into uh, thinking that light is the ultimate, the ultimate gnosis, the ultimate understanding or the representation of source, uh, which I think source transcends light in so many ways. And source is more, uh, more felt than, than seen. Lucifer is also called the light bringer. And the morning star, and uh, the, the the feminine aspect to this is is Venus, which is also called the morning star, and Venusian energy, like the female Venus energies, are prone to and the negative parts are prone to luxury and again light, luxury uh, things that glitter and things that glow. Uh, seduction, indulgence, entertainment. The ultimate example is pornography, I think, oh, because yeah. it's hypnosis. And then just to like further your point that it's based on optics, but then based, <laughs> I want to get into the other side of it, which is the feeding of the serpent or the lower energies. And why I use porn as an example there is because it's all about using the optic, the upper part to, uh, in trance and even just looking at a screen at a 60 hertz refresh rate is a hypnotic is a hypnotic uh, frequency yeah, proven yeah. so it uses that hypnosis to then basically draw out the energy from the lower chakras in the form of like you know you're you're masturbating or you're spilling your energy out in out of yourself but it's all done without the middle point of the heart being engaged where like if you're in a loving if you are making love with a, 
your actual human lover, <laughs> your heart is in it. <laughs> your heart is yeah. there. It's completely different. So can you talk about the danger of feeding the serpent and like other ways that, I mean, you can expand on this example, but if you have other examples too, I'd love that. Yeah, the, I was, I was going to touch on that. Uh, it's good you brought it up. Pornography is a perfect example. And what I mean by feeding the serpent is like the way Kundalini energy works is that it, it begins uh, at the root chakra, the base generator, ger generative uh, sexual principle. And it uses that, that fire to light up the other chakras and, and supposedly uh, open, opens up the crown chakra, which leads to uh, samadhi or satori or a form of enlightenment. But uh, what I've seen from just by experiencing a lot of this and by uh, reading and delving deep into the knowledge that Kundalini activation, Kundalini yoga seems to not discard, but it sort of, it, it doesn't put enough emphasis on the heart based energy. And what it does it's, is it, you explained it perfectly actually. It just, it, it uses, it connects the, the lower chakras, um, mainly the root chakra. It connects it with the, the top two chakras, the, the third eye and the crown, but mainly the third eye and also probably the, the throat chakra as well. It sort of connects those two, creating this, creating this thing where you've fired up the serpent, which has gone directly to the, in, right into your mind, into your subconscious. And usually our minds and our subconscious aren't, we, we haven't trained them enough. We haven't gotten to that point where we're strong enough. We don't have the will to, to sit on or sit on our own throne. And uh, that's when this serpent energy seems to have its way with us. It constantly, it uses this feedback loop of using the brain to power the, the, the generative area and the generative area to power, to entrain the thoughts in a certain way. Another and, way of putting it is like, just you're thinking with your dick, if you're a guy, <laughs> literally, yeah, yeah. it's like, it's like replace, putting the bottom on top is literally, that's what we mean when we're saying it's inverted. Yeah, exactly. And it's, yeah, I mean, you're basically, you're getting seduced by uh, just this optical phenomena, which is using your, your sexual energy, the fire there. And it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's seducing you and entrancing you. It's, and in this uh, trap, you're not able to, to rise above it. Um, you, you still stay, stay in this loop and you can't use the heart like that third trinary essence, uh, the main uh, thing that connects us to source. And without that, uh, it's, I mean, we're in this sort of uh, uh, a worldly materialistic trap. And I think that many people who do practice Kundalini Yoga, uh, they, they may be uh, influenced by and the snake in negative, more negative ways than they, they might imagine. Another way that this shows itself is in, as well as pornography, the uh, uh, Hollywood, the uh, entertainment industry. Uh, I've seen, I, I don't consume popular culture. I haven't done so for a long time, but I hear from a lot of people and like several years ago, uh, there was a period when I did watch Netflix and from what I saw there, there was the main driving thing behind that is, is violence and sexuality. Or poop jokes and fart jokes, which is literally like the lowest chakra level. It's like <laughs> underneath the root, which I, I get that we can laugh at ourselves and at things like that. But when that is literally the driver of the entire comedy, it's there's something else going on to your unconscious that you may not be recognizing. And I want to also throw in there that 
There is a serious link between the third eye and the sacral sexual chakra in that you're physically creating with the creative force and energy of the sacral. But we often look at our third eye as being just our imagination, like it's a type of sight, but it's not. It's actually an output. You're through, you're through putting an entire reality through your third eye. You don't realize it necessarily, but it is the, it is the mirror reflection of the sacral chakra on the metaphysical spiritual side. So by getting entranced and entrained into a certain view of what the world is based on the media you're consuming, that's the world that you are creating. And so the beings we're talking about that ride up and down our, our chakras as like an elevator to whatever they want to go to, they are fully aware of that and <laughs> they're using they're, that's actually the whole point exactly exactly this is energy harvesting at its best if, at its finest i mean the hollywood was was set up by alias to crowley and the, the golden dawn and uh, before that um film in general cinema was used for pro- propaganda in its early days the main reason it was used it was used in Nazi Germany and in Soviet Russia. I think it was Lenny Reifenstahl and um, Sergei Eisenstein, which used these, like they used this medium perfectly to, to hypnotize people into one type of ideology. And, uh, this is a form of magic, actually. And it's, it's a way that allows these, uh, energies and beings to, use our our spine as an elevator of, you know, t- to come and go as they please and to harvest emotions from us. Like when we're watching a movie, we, we identify with characters and we get sad, we get frustrated, we get angry, we, we cry, we get scared, we get horrified. And uh, all this energy can be used, I mean, in so many constructive ways to to create a new world, to create something that's beautiful or just to um, spend, I mean, you could use that energy to create better family relations, better relations with our friends. And it, this is a very powerful energy that's being harvested from us. Well, in the past, we used that energy to do stuff like grow our own food. Now we got to go to a grocery store. I mean, there's there it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect example. So I'm curious also to ask, because we are talking about the fact that you've actually encountered some of the beings that are the architects of this in DMT space, are there positive beings in that space as well? Or is it seem like uh, possibly the entheogens are not always as much of an entheogen so much as uh, just another hip- self-hypnosis tool? I'm curious your take on this. I think this is a dip, this is a place to go that is not being talked about by a lot of people. In general, it's just like the plant medicines are our saviors, but are is that just more savior programming? <laughs> yeah, um, well, I have experienced the positive aspects of of these, like the, for example, the illusion or Luciferian energies, but not as as individualized beings. These are like massive archetypes, uh, which which are in all of us. They don't, from what I understand, they don't really care about if we ascend or not. They're, they're just there. They've been there since time immemorial, I think. It's just that some beings have been, I think, have been so much caught up in one type of of uh, energy that they've uh, they've coalesced that they've become that that negative part of of Venus so that that negative part of Saturn and they keep they propagate that energy without even knowing what else what else to do like that's become part of their essence and um, yeah the these plant medicines they're, they're very uh, they can be very, very uh, useful to have for me, but there is also a very uh, a destructive side to it as well. Uh, I've I've seen both sides to this. I've lost years of my life in pursuit of of 
self-transforming machine elves and, and these tripped in uh, emerald towers and castles and and uh, I mean I've 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 lost myself in that world and I've uh, gotten nothing from it and during those times I've lost my grip on reality and what was actually happening happening around me and uh, I was not growing as a person as a as a spirit and soul and um, it's it's very important that that when we do things like this that uh, we have extreme self-confidence in in our in our power uh, in who who and what we are and what we can do and so we need to be able to master ourselves to a certain point if we don't the the substances become gateways for energies and spirits to to master us to to use us uh, to possess us and to act and live through us this isn't just for uh, psychedelics and entheogens i mean uh, it's more evident with with cannabis especially alcohol and, and ketamine and things like heroin and cocaine i think that there's a very powerful element of, of demonic possession involved in the use of these substances uh, especially when you don't know yourself you don't know your own power and i'm not talking about not surrendering to the psychedelic experience I and mean, that's something that you, that's part of the journey you need to surrender but there's there's a point where even though you surrender you know that all is self and you know that you are the, the sovereign the monarch of your own kingdom and if you don't know this then this another being another spirit another energy or ideology can slip inside your mind and sit on your throne and then you'd be none the wiser this is real stuff man i actually Today's 420, which I said celebratorily in the introduction, because I do see cannabis as a good healing uh, salve for a lot of the issues of lack of awareness that we have, because it increases sensitivity. And in the in the West, especially the United States, people are so emotionally calloused that they have not even got even a drop of sensitivity sometimes to their own emotions or feelings. So maybe yeah. there are some sort of negative, like you can have a bad trip on smoking cannabis you could say but if you become self-aware or you are self-aware through that process it's actually revealing to you blockages in yourself and then you can actually use that as fuel but so for me this is something i want to bring up i've touched on it a little bit lately but i have had like a almost full-time uh, morning noon and night habit with cannabis for years and although it helped me transform out of a lot of old versions of myself especially especially with a lot of the weight that stress was putting on me, like literal physical weight. <laughs> I actually, yeah. believe it or not, I weighed like 100 pounds more than I weigh right now at one point. Wow. And yeah, hard to believe. It wasn't for a very long period. It was from when I went to college and was getting massively indoctrinated with some pretty heavy duty stuff while also eating the worst possible food ever that they provide for the uh, children there. So I don't fully like blame myself for getting there, but I do thank myself for getting myself out of it. And I, th I thank and honor the plant medicine that was part of that journey of transformation. But then it got to a point where for years it was like I had to have it. It wasn't an option. And that is part of that's a type of demonic possession right there because I'm not fully aware of myself and my own ability to just be okay in every moment. And I am grateful that I've made the transition out of that state. And I had, my use of that plant medicine is now balanced and I can, I can go without it. And I do go without it entire days, you know, no problem. And so then whenever I do return to it now, instead of, I, I realized how it was keeping me guard, like causing me to guard myself out of compassionate interaction with people, even who you would call strangers, especially. And now I'm much more able to connect. And even when I do use the medicine, it brings about the euphoria uh, and 
And if I'm combining that with something like go, like I like to combine it with going outside with my bare feet and running around and like playing with the, on the earth, playing with my animals, you know, with my, with my tribe, my people, that, that is a different thing. (laughs) That's like heart. My heart is in it when I'm using that medicine then, and I'm not needing it. So I just want to point that out for myself as my own example that I've actually unlocked massive levels of energy throughput in my creative potential just by rebalancing that relationship and no longer being enslaved to it by my own self. So uh, it's cool that you bring that up. And I want to get into the topic of possession really soon, but because (laughs) that's definitely on our list. But before we get away from the cult of luxury, can we talk about the inverted Venusian archetype as it appears in the music industry and the negative influence that we're having on the sacred feminine through all things pornographic. Yeah, yeah, uh, for sure. Well, I'm a, I'm in Libra, uh, so my charts are, are, are ruled by Venus. So I I have I know what it is to be possessed by that that sort of, that archetype. That, and yesterday was a full moon in Libra. I'll say. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, I yesterday was quite difficult for me uh, uh, I felt the, the, the full the, the effects of the full moon on me and it was difficult to push through but it was something that I, I did and something that I learned as well it was a very uh, powerful experience for me and people who, who are under the, the sign of Venus have this uh, are prone to things like seduction and luxury and and just this, these things that are synonymous with the the dark aspects of, of the Venusian archetype and in the, I've seen this in the uh, music industry a lot as well the entertainment industry um, I don't like follow much of it but sometimes I come across it in some movies or I, I hear people or something and for years when I was just, just hearing the songs from Rihanna and, and Beyonce and the way that they were acting, um, just their appearance in films and the video clips. I mean, they seem to exude this, this inverted, this feminine energy that's really steeped in just this, their quality of seduction and just wanting more, constantly wanting more. This this thing in, in into materialism, and these are like very large role models for women. That and and, and I see when I uh, just read some news sometimes, or I see people acting, see teenagers around me acting and uh, emulating this force of this ISIS or. Venus energy, they're emulating uh, Rihanna, and Beyonce, and uh, Madonna. And these characters are, they're like, I don't know, antennas or reflectors or something that, that puts out this energy for others to emulate. The symbolism in their music videos, I wouldn't necessarily recommend going and watching them. But if you want, go look up Katy Perry music videos and things like that. Or even find some YouTuber that will break it down for you <laughs> because they're out there. There's a tribe that actually puts a spotlight on this and shows just the where these archetypes are being used to play off of your unconscious recognition of them to use that third eye of yours to keep projecting the world that the that these lower forces want, I guess. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, Servan Boma is a really good example. He- I, if I remember correctly, he did talk about uh, a lot of these characters in the music industry who were tied to uh, the negative aspects of, of Venus and Saturn and, and, and such. Beyonce's got that song, Put a Ring on It, a Saturnian ring. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And there's the uh, uh, Rihanna's, I think it was Rihanna's uh, Shine Bright Like a Diamond. And that's, that's quite, uh, there's a lot of demonic imagery and symbolism in, in the video clip, but also, uh, in the, the, the words itself, like 
uh, the word diamond is, is actually from the daemon, uh, a divided man, uh, and to shine bright, like that, again, another reference to this indoctrination into just light-based gnosis rather than feeling. And so uh, there are a lot of examples, but uh, these two that I've just, uh, two or three that, uh, that have really, I've noticed, but I'm, I'm sure there's many more. Uh, I just don't really get into popular culture anymore. I pulled up the lyrics to this song because it does sound like from the outside that it's all about just kind of nice things, but it's talking about what you're talking about. I, I want to bring these lyrics to light. Find light in the beautiful sea. I choose to be happy. You and I, you and I, we're like diamonds in the sky. You're a shooting star. I see a vision of ecstasy. So a vision of ecstasy. That's it right there. Those are the a yeah. vision of ecstasy. We're talking about optics here <laughs> and what an ecstasy. That's even actually one of these substances. Yeah, exactly. And even here later in the lyrics, she says, palms rise to the universe as we moonshine and molly. So there it is again, moonshine and then molly is another word for ecstasy. So yeah. <laughs> uh, you, this is definitely just one small, I mean, most of the, that's almost all the lyrics. All it's got other than that is like shine bright like a diamond a million times. They say that over and over and over again. So I, I can write lyrics where I don't have to say the same thing that much if I wanted to, and I'm not even a songwriter. So clearly there's like some intent behind it. Yeah. Yeah. There's, uh, it's all hypnotic programming. It's all, uh, well, from what I understand, based on MK Ultra, uh, type programming, uh, as well as like the, the, the Crowleyan, just inverted magic sort of stuff. And would you agree that actually those, that type of program and that type of system isn't really as successful as? made to believe like i think that they put that out the information about mk ultra to the level that they do and they have even got certain celebrities embracing it and like wearing wearing the t-shirt literally to make us believe that yeah they figured out mind control it's on lock they got us mind controlled no <laughs> we got ourselves in this mess and we can get ourselves out of it the only thing they can do is trick us into thinking that they've got the power and that that's part of the false light it's false power yeah yeah exactly very well said man it's just it's taking the power away from us by, by yeah. Because we give it to them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Let's talk about this a little more and what we mean by demonic possession and like the divided man or divided consciousness as the true meaning of demonic. Yeah, the, it comes from uh, daemon, I think. Uh, daemon is, it, all, it means if you break it down, it's day <coughs> and moon. So it's, uh, it's like it's bringing a division between day and night. So it's all about duality. It's like, it's just, uh, the, the, the main force behind it is, is to, um, break apart wholeness, to break apart something that's, that's complete and, and powerful and, uh, not even one. It's whole. It's everything. But as soon as it's been divided, it's something that's been uh, divided and, and s fragmented becomes a demon, something that's lost its, it, its purpose, lost its wholeness and or connection with, uh, source consciousness. From what I understand can be classified as a demon, as a divided, divided man, man and uh, being woman and man. Right? The war of the sexes. Ma is in man. Ma, M, M, A. Also, we means woman. It doesn't just mean man. There's been a lot of uh, we like play around this, but it means both. And yeah, war of the sexes is is a big one. I like the breakdown that I heard from the previously mentioned Savan Bomar of SecretEnergy.com. We can all do this ourselves if we actually just like take the time to examine. But what we see in especially in the United States is this huge. I mean, this has been going on, but. Divorce, the divorce culture, how, how much energy is extracted by the divorce itself by uh, middlemen. I mean, ultimately, that's what is going on is a bunch of middlemen harvesting energy off of natural processes where they're not actually required for that process to happen. And so while it's true that sometimes in relationships, we move apart from each other, 
that doesn't mean we have to divorce. And what divorce actually means is literally it's diving. It's like it's uh, <laughs> dive and divide combined into one word. So you're not only being split in half, but you're also being sunk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. I, I Exactly. That, that's not as big here in Turkey as it is in the States, but uh, it's, it's growing here. There's, there's a huge industry around divorce as well now here it's growing and uh, i've seen it in among my friends and family as well and uh, i myself i'm in my second marriage i spent 16 years in, in a, a, a marriage before that, that it didn't work out we we grew apart but we we separated on on good terms we we're still friends now i mean i wouldn't call us friends but we're i mean um, we're on good terms with each other, and there was there was no there was no division. There was no you didn't get torn up by it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's super important, also, yeah, to point out that it's even the marriaging system itself. That's got the word "mare" in it, like nightmare <laughs> or "mar," like yeah. you're being marred or scarred. Uh, that's, yeah, it's, it's that's where the Russian. state comes in. It's more middlemen to even give you the certificate that now you're together, even though really you didn't need anyone to tell you that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I mean, it's and you, I mean, you put on a ring and everything, and we we don't either. <laughs> Me and mine. Yeah, I mean, it's. I, I wish there was a way that we could do this without actually having the the, the state. Marius and the, the the only reason we did marry was because uh, we wanted uh, to have a child and uh, because the laws uh, of the of uh, the country here in Turkey, I would, would couldn't be its legal father, so there was going to be a lot of problems, just a lot of stupid legal problems. So in order to to bypass that, we decided to get married. It's a fascinating, that's a fascinating topic in and of itself, that whole ritual and how Saturnian it really is. But to go back to the possession thread, because I think that is super interesting and it's something I want to talk about is spe- specifically when it comes to alcohol, also known as spirits. And I've brought this up, but not for quite some time on the show. And I'll, I will let you you know, give your thoughts on this because I want to go in depth here. But just my personal experience, when I quit consuming alcohol, I started evolving. <laughs> it's a good thing to quit. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I've I've had a very long and difficult history with alcohol. I still do struggle with it at times, and and I've I've seen like when I there are times when I do binge like. I drink like for weeks on end, make me drink every night. I, uh, I don't lose myself, but there are times when uh, I just I drink because of some cases of stress or other just just some issues that I choose not to to face or I'm maybe too afraid to face or something at that moment at that time. And then you know, I find myself in this trap of, of alcohol consumption. And uh, it's almost uh, non-existent now uh, compared to uh, my past when it was uh, rampant. I mean, I would drink massive amounts every night, and I've I've found that it slows me down so much, like in every single aspect, in every way, in, in the physical world, in the spiritual world. And the way I talk and, and, and everything. And it's affected me deeply. And that's why I've really been looking into it a lot lately and uh, realized that it's a, an, a, another form of demonic possession. And there's the, that's why it's called spirits in the first place. Uh, it's, a, it's a portal, a gateway that allows spirits to, to come through you, into you. And in this case, these spirits are, I think people who have died who haven't made the transition, both maybe from alcohol consumption or just something that they've left this world without having completed something, without having 
learnt a lesson or something, and and they 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 remain in this realm, and they sort of live through others who consume these substances, and there's specific beings that that sort of possess people who drink alcohol, and I think a lot of these are connected to our ancestors, like our father or uncle or aunt or auntie or grandmother or some somebody in the family who's who had a problem with alcohol that passed and there's a, a deep connection a genetic connection as well as a spiritual and it's and it all goes through this thing with alcohol and they sort of i think they are the ones that that, that sort of possess us and and egg us on to to drink more it's not just a physical addiction i think the addiction of alcohol and uh, it's again i think it's related deeply related to black magic the black magic ritual like the whole alcohol industry the manufacturers and, and companies that sell these spirits i think they're deeply like uh, they're part of this huge black magic ritual that that's also part of the whole ritual of eating animals which is also another satanic concept animal products because um, i found that after a, a, when i get a huge hangover or something after drinking a lot of alcohol uh, well, uh, as i used to do uh, i would crave animal products and i remember back when i did eat animal products i mean eating uh, some meat or eggs or cheese uh, would alleviate the symptoms of the hangover a lot more quickly than than I mean eating something that was plant based, and uh, I think that's what it feeds each other. This whole ritual, this black magic ritual, the consumption of alcohol, which leads again to the consumption of of animals, and I've I've seen a lot of studies where vegans and vegetarians who relapse usually do so after a long night of drinking and they, they do so at like like really late at night where there's like they get like a kebab or something like that or a burger and which is usually what's available at that time but it's also something there's an energetic there's something linked between alcohol and cooked meat I think I definitely agree with that and I've never quite put it in two and two together like you have just now for us that it definitely reduces your willpower first of all <laughs> yeah. and actually cannabis can be the same way and the whole time you're talking about your jive with alcohol I was just thinking about how I was retarding myself i.e. slowing myself down because that's what the definition of retard is to slow down yeah I was retarding myself with cannabis in a similar way. I mean, my, my light was not as bright. My, I was not as articulate, you know, all of these things were definitely suffering, but I was kind of tricking myself that they weren't and that it was actually making me more creative or what have you. But in balance, actually that I think does have some medicinal qualities to it. I mean, it even like kills cancer. THC does alcohol. On the other hand, I really see this as a big inversion of something like, Making us, th making people think that alcohol is something that's going to fuel them, when in reality, it's it is great fuel, but more like for your car. And instead, we're using <laughs> we're using this crazy blood of the earth thing that we call oil as our fuel. When there have been entire countries, I mean Brazil right now, the country of Brazil runs most of their their stuff on alcohol. And if we actually had brought back real agriculture and not just monocropping surplus doesn't have to be just thrown in the garbage like it is here in the United States. All of that surplus food material is fuel. You can ferment it and create alcohol. And even most people's cars right now can actually run on alcohol-based fuel with only a slight tweak to the software that affects the fuel injector of the car, changing the way that the fuel is sprayed into the combustion chamber. I'm not super knowledgeable about it, but I do. I'm aware that... <laughs> It is way more possible than people realize and even used to be the case that you would 
people's car, like Henry Ford created the first Model T to run on alcohol or gas interchangeably. Because when you're out in the country, you would not find a petrol station, but you might come up to yeah. some farmer and be like, hey, you got a still? Can I have a little bit to fill up my tank? Because he's been, you know, making his own alcohol to fuel his equipment. <laughs> so that's one way the alcohol is inverted. It is a fuel, but it's not a fuel for humans per se. It's a fuel yeah. for other other t- purposes, including like lighting lamps, all kinds of stuff. So as it's, it's a good solvent and cleaner as well. Man. It's good yeah. to, to rub on your skin and when mixed with other uh, oils and herbs to, to get rid of fungus and stuff. I mean, there's, there are uses for alcohol, but uh, I mean, consuming it is, I don't find any uh, medicinal properties at all. There are some mm-hmm. Sufis that would go into alcohol based ecstasy that they would say gave them some connection to the divine. We may be talking about though the the false light here because it is an ecstasy program. What I do find yeah. interesting though is that we can actually link consciousness to water really easily. And that in my yeah. opinion consciousness is like contained in the water of our body in a way. That's why if you bleed too much that you leave your body. <laughs> so with that being said, what is alcohol doing? It's diluting or replacing the water in your body with alcohol, which means the frequency that is you that normally is able to live in the in the water like it's a hard drive, it can't be in there now. You get ejected out to the point where you even can black out. You're literally not in there anymore. But you're still moving around and saying stuff and doing stuff and acting all heinously. So who's driving? I mean, there you go. Demonic possession. People black out, but they're yeah. still doing stuff. Yeah, yeah. Very well said, man. Yeah. Uh, it dehydrates us to the point where... That allows something else to, to come in. Yeah, I agree. Uh, water is, is a perfect carrier for consciousness. Uh, I never thought of it that way, but uh, as I think of it, it's yeah, perfect. Yeah. Well, we won't harp on that too much. I do want to keep talking about the possession topic, but let's just say nobody out there, I, Hakan nor I, love you any less that you may be drinking or have drank recently. And ne- neither should you love yourself any less over it. And that even if you don't find the strength to, or even think it's necessary to quit doing that, that's okay. You're on your path. We all learn in our ways and we're not even always right. I don't want anyone to take what we say as absolute gospel or truth. But from my perspective, it's definitely like what we've been saying about alcohol all fits. And I think we make contracts like you've put in these notes that you gave me with spirits uh, and demons like even just as so simple as the contract that what I do for social fun is to go out to a bar or something. Can you speak more on the, the contracts we make though? Because I was curious if you had what you had to say about that. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we make contracts all the time, I think. And most of it is, is subconscious. Uh, we're not aware that we make these contracts. And this is by, I think a lot by experiencing trauma and traumatic events and things that really radically affect our lives. And in order to, to, to forget or nullify the pain, we make contracts with, I, I think we, with certain energies that uh, come in. We we're waiting just at that time. To, to come in and alleviate our pain, to, to help forget or to show a false light, uh, just a, a way of coping with the traumas that we experience. And we make these contracts because at that time uh, we were not aware of our own power, our own strength, that we're, we are able to transcend all of this by ourselves. And, and when we're not aware of this, we we seek help, and we seek help uh, psychologically and spiritually. And usually, the the beings that come to help don't have our best interests in mind. Uh, they they feed on our energy in in every sense of the word when we make these contracts with them. They make us stronger in the aspect that uh, we're able to cope with these traumas or with life or with any problems that we're having. 
but we're also a slave to this contract, to this substance, this this demon, this spirit that we've made the contract with. And we, I mean, we make all sorts of contracts with um, with each other, with um, in our relationships. In we make it with the state. We make it with religious entities and ties. We make contracts with beings that claim themselves gods, and we, we make contracts with them that they will give us immortality, as if we're not immortal already. In return for worship, for for energy, again that's that's harvested from us. There was something that. I first heard this from this guy called Harald Kaltzweller. Oh, yeah, I'm familiar with his work. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's, he was talking about circumcision, about demonic pos- as demonic possession as well. And when I heard him talk about that, I, I, I sort of meditated on that and remembered my own experiences, my own circumcision, and was certainly the most one of the most horrific traumatic experiences of my life. Me too, man. Me too. It's not it's not a small thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and the, the the way that works is it's amazing. I mean amazing is in a in a really horrific way that this trauma uh, circumcision is a is a huge trauma. And at that point that this is the most easiest times when we allow spirits to possess us because that's when we're our weakest in uh, massive traumatic events. And there's spirits hanging around hospitals all all over the place because people die there in horrible agony without being connected to truth at all in many cases. Exactly, yeah. Hospitals and nightclubs and bars and and, um, stadiums even, stadiums and stuff like that. Where they, they like to feed off the energy of, of division. And anyway, this, this thing about circumcision is that when it, during that event, when, you, when, as, uh, you get circumcised, I think we make this subconscious pact, uh, with this demonic entity that, that comes to us and it, offers to alleviate pain and offers to for us to, to forget the, the experience. And it's usually, I mean, most of the time we, we accept and, and um, a lot of uh, many people that I know don't remember the, the time they were circumcised or they don't remember the pain or this or it's sort of foggy and hazy for them. And the second step to this is that during adolescence, uh, the teenage years, we become uh, sexually active. And this is the case for me. And I've, I, from talking with others, I know that there's a, it's a similar for them as well, that you, the first few sexual account, encounters are very awkward and, 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 Beyond awkward, horrible, I mean, uh, horrible. Yeah, uh, you're not able to p- perform. You have no idea what you're doing, and even after you learn how to do it, you still uh, have this aspect of imp- imp- impotence and not not being uh, able to perform. And and that's when the other, the the second part. That's when the the demon comes back again, and and offers you another pact and. and a, offers you sexual prowess. It offers you this sort of machismo or something like that uh, in order for a deeper control on your, on your sexual energy. And, and you, you give that again willingly as a, as an adolescent boy, you, you give that away in order to be normal again, in order to be able to, to function properly. Nowadays, and the pact is porn. I mean, they don't even give you the pact of actual sexual prowess and getting out there and like having sex with lots of women. Mo- most people aren't even able to get to that point of uh, of life as still out of balance as that is. 
I just would say in, in general, especially in the United States, with the meat thing and the alcohol thing, the impotency thing is real, especially when they've been entrained since they were the very point that they became sexually online because they had access to the internet, that they're able to gratify that energy through the internet and through the porn. They're never even going to be able to do it in, in 3D in a physical way, especially not with love. I just had to throw that in there. I mean, I'm talking about my own experience when I was younger here, as hard as it is, but I was I did not know. <laughs> I'm I'm right there with you. A lot of people that may be resonating with that. Yeah, yeah. I had it took me ages to to get back to normality, and then after that to learn how to 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 make love like a a, a spiritual being, and uh, it took years. Like, but, but I think this is quite widespread. It's not just in the in the United States. I think it's all around the world, and it's something that that plagues like adolescent boys, young men alike. And to go back to this idea of making contracts, just look at it like this: What does contract mean besides making an agreement? It means that you like shrivel up and shrink up. So yeah, <laughs> apply that to thinking about your penis and. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a good contract you've signed on for. <laughs> but then on top of that, what uh, making the contract involves that you even get taken for a ride by somebody wanting to take advantage of you. How does that happen when you're looking for what you can use to get you where you want to go instead of realizing that you are all things already and all is self, then you're going to be used. That's what it means is being used as an elevator for other beings and spirits to travel between realms uh, by using entheogens same exact thing you're using the entheogen to do that because you can't do it yourself yet so the beings are using you to do that <laughs> it's just, it, my example i always like to use this because it's something directly from my life but whenever i used to go to music festivals looking for looking for drug experiences as part of why i was going and now that's not really the reason i go at all and often there's no substances even involved with my journey there yet i still reach other dimensions don't worry <laughs> Um, I would go around looking for, say, some mushrooms. I want some mushrooms. I go looking for them. Inevitably, I would find somebody because I'm walking around asking people. I'd find someone who said they had them and then they'd sell me something that looked right. But then when I ate it, nothing happened. They're bunk. So the point is, like, mm -hmm. when you go around needing something, you need something so that you can use it, then you're going to find someone that needs you to use you as opposed to, like, letting things come to you and attracting and becoming the magnet then what comes to you will be way more aligned, I would say. Because yeah, it doesn't come yeah. from a place of need. Very well said, yeah. Uh, it's When it's based on scarcity and the results are never good. I've also noticed, like, um, I, I very rarely do DMT or entheogens uh, anymore, but uh, I've sort of grown the ability to... to trigger endogenously through uh, lucid dreams and uh, brief bre breathing techniques, like uh, really hardcore breathing techniques where I'm able to completely, I think, uh, leave my body. And then uh, I experience trance states or entheogenic states or like these, or I can access the tryptamine realm like almost there's no difference between a DMT trip or something that I experience within myself. And the, the main difference there is that if, when I do it endogenously, I, I feel that I'm in complete control. Uh, there's no way for, a, for this other energies or spirits or something to come in and, and ride on my uh, on my consciousness or use me as an elevator or, or s suggest something to me. When I'm doing this endogenously, I mean, I'm doing this in my own universe, and it it's it's really empowering. Yeah, man, I know what you're talking about. Um, I've even been tricked into thinking I was doing things endogenously back when I had a cannabis habit. 
that was allowing stuff to still piggyback onto the experience and be like, you're going to die. This feeling means that you're actually like leaving the entire reality now. Say goodbye to all your friends. <laughs> Get scared. <Yeah. laughs> like whatever thought could be put in to make me scared because it takes a lot. It takes something, a doozy to make me scared. Most things I've realized all fear is an illusion, but it still could happen to me uh, quite a bit until I finally got past that hurdle of needing the crutch. And I mean, yeah. not that I'm fully past it every hurdle by no means i'm not a perfected being of course but hakan please give us your closing thoughts and also sp specifically let people know where they can find you online and what you'd like them to go go dial into as far as being able to support you and enjoy the creations that you're bringing into this realm yeah it's been wonderful talking with you again even better than the first time and I, likewise it's very difficult for me to talk on this subject with anybody in, in real life in 3D or online it, and uh, I really do value your friendship as well and this has been a beautiful transmission and I'm really looking forward to doing this again and yeah I yeah, really hope that some people the, the, the listeners will find some something beautiful something thought provoking in what we were talking about, something that, that might help them on their way in this beautiful existence, yeah. And online, I you can access my, my work through my website, net. and I'm also on, on Facebook, H-A-K-A-N-H-I-S-I-M, and you can buy my works through my website or through Etsy. I also have a Patreon, but I... I need to update that. I have, I don't think there are any people following me there, so I need to look on look into Patreon. But yeah, just find me through those websites. And if you're interested in syncretism and esoteric uh, studies and, and uh, ideas, I have a whole art series on that, and that's at universal-transmissions.net. And there, I I have a complete series. Where that's where you can also find images of the cosmic egg as well. And you could also support me through that website as well, as well as my own website. So thank you for, for having me on. It's been a wonderful wild ride. Yet so calm and measured and like, I don't know, I see the framework of the dream around me whenever I speak to you, man. It literally like stuff <laughs> stuff gets a lot more shifty <laughs> it looks like it feels like i'm underwater which we are air is actually water at a different level of density so anyway before i get into a whole another two hours with you we better hang it up for now and just please guys go check out hakan's work if you got through this whole conversation without looking up his art you're doing yourself a disservice because it's going to speak to you on the unconscious and conscious levels simultaneously and bridge that gap show you some real beauty, some real truth in the form of uh, what I would call sacred use of symbolism. Keep, you know, and, and it's time to get serious, guys. Like, I, I know that we each have our own lives to live and, and all that, but looking at the state of things and the health of our tribe, people are dropping like flies. It's time to li live by the example and bring the true light, reject the false light and transcend before we get eaten for dinner <laughs> so thank you man and we'll we'll call it here and I'll, I'll speak to you soon thanks everyone for listening thank you man thank you wow tribe all i can say about that one is what a journey for you guys to be joining me on this type of conversation and for what it took for me to actually get to where I'm at today to deliver this type of conversation, I'm really reflecting on the wholeness of this entire journey, not just for this talk with Hakan, but yeah, what's led me here and how <laughs> a lot of the things we discussed in this conversation were the things I had to come to grips with before I could even get to the point where you're hearing me now talking about it and sharing it with you. I want to start off this outro section by just going over some of the things that were in the plus extension with Hakan today and then wrapping up my thoughts on various of these topics because I think this is pretty serious level stuff, adept level, adult level conversation here. And 
Although there's way more that could always be said when it comes to balancing. <laughs> there's a certain point where we had to cut off the conversation and stop the call so that we could both go on with our lives that day. And I want to just give some clarity to some of these points. But first, let's talk about what you'll hear in plus if you are going to join and become a plus member today, which you can do at patreon.com forward slash interverse. So we talked about how to nullify addiction contracts with negative entities through heart consciousness. We shared our experiences with overcoming tobacco abuse. We discussed seeing reflections of the infinite self in the other that you're with, whoever that may be. And Hakan explains his cosmic egg artwork that was inspired by out of body and beyond the planet type of journeys. So this is where <laughs> things got really interesting. I've been wanting to talk about the cosmic egg for such a long time, and we finally did. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, do check the show notes because I will be linking the plus topics in the show notes where you can actually find some videos and some artwork and some things that are going to give more context to what I'm discussing with you now. But the best way to get the context is actually to just become a plus member. We talked about the meaning of the cosmic egg in context to ancient wisdom about the structure of our universe and the often misunderstood deep esoteric meaning behind the concept of a flat earth, which actually ties into things our ancestors were trying to help us understand about the structure of our consciousness more than even just the outer world. But what that outer world actually looks like it is, is nested toroidal fields. <laughs> so we talked about the nested toroidal fields and Hakan's cosmological gnosis. And then we talked on some of the other creators who look at this type of syncretism that we're discussing with the cosmic egg. And we linked those videos that those guys have made in the show notes. So look for Norb's Orb Theory and Martin Kenny on YouTube. And you'll learn a lot about the ultimate science of syncretism, which we talk about syncretism, of course, in this plus extension. We also discussed the flaws in the NASA-sanctioned worldview of our world and explained cosmic abandonment trauma, which is a huge thing to understand about what's actually causing all this polarity and this imbalance. So we also discussed interpreting the alchemical idea of as above, so below to the fullest extent. Hakan shared stories of successfully interrogating supermassive cephalopod-type Cthulhu beings in the astral oceans beyond and above the Earth. And then we talked about the lunar wave phenomenon, which you can find from YouTuber Crow777 and some other ones. And it is a video that will seemingly demonstrate that the moon is somehow underwater. And this is a really trippy thing, but it ties into what we're discussing with this cosmic egg stuff big time. So Crow777 on YouTube, I'll link to that. He's got multiple captures of this lunar wave and it is weird. Basically looks like the moon is rippling as if you're looking at the moon through water and that it's under the water or beyond the water. So what else we talked about was how the outer and inner planets or planes beyond the earth are depicted by the cosmic egg model of the cosmos that our ancestors gave us and what that actually means when the government and NASA are saying when they want to go to Mars. And last but not least, I mean, actually, we talked about much more than all this, but we discussed the concept of fallen angels and humans who are shooting stars the rising and the falling that seems like humanity is doing simultaneously and discussed why there is that duality in humanity. So if you find that to be all some very interesting stuff, especially following on the tales of talking about all this like Luciferian cult of luxury stuff and the light traps that we did in the first hour, then yeah, I think that the plus extension is definitely for you. But I do want to make some emphasis on what's really going on when we're talking about the Luciferian or the Satanic archetypes, because you can look and connect in occultism, Lucifer to Venus, which is also connected to like the creative and the divine feminine. So I want to be really clear. We're not really trying to make all these divisions that the, the controllers of our current reality paradigm do try to make. So when we're talking about this Luciferian archetype or concept of the corrupted venus or female that is what we're talking about it's actually the corrupted and inverted version of the. it's not the divine feminine even it's just like the corrupted feminine and that's what sort of the luciferian is and then the satanic is what you could call the corrupted masculine or the mars energy and that definitely connects further to the cosmic egg depiction because in the model of our our plane 
we've got Mars and Venus outside of this plane acting as a sun and moon in another dimension, so to speak. They're rulers of a realm beyond us or below us. And what that also would mean is it's further than source than we are, further to, further away from source than we are. So <laughs> if this sounds really crazy, then like I said, you ought to get on some of this cosmic egg understanding that comes in these videos I linked and also in the plus extension we just had. But more about the false light matrix, it's really like the chaos of the unrefined and pure imagination. And that's where we get the bedazzling aspect of the false light, how that can come in through the DMT experiences or even in dreams. And what life in a body really allows us to anchor in the untamed imagination into forms, and we can learn from them in an easier linear fashion. Not to control those forms, but to let our creations flow at the level at which we can respond to them without being consumed by them. So I think part of this like false light matrix of control is that we're getting all this stuff so rapid fire and we're not even really taking the full time to understand the ramifications of like even just the media we take in, the shows or movies we watch. It's It's pretty remarkable too to consider that this is like a colonization of our imagination in a way, whenever we are filling our heads with the X-Men and the, <laughs> you know, Superman and aliens and all this stuff. And that's our entertainment. Well, in the past, our entertainment would have come through our ability to tell these stories to each other or to have our own imaginations at work. And we would watch these movies in our own heads. And maybe, yeah, we've imagined into realms far beyond what possibly the ancestors would have been imagining but not really, because if you look at, say, back to the X-Men, for an example, they're just like a rehashing of the same pantheon of deities that comes in all flavors from different ancients. And what I want to say about that is also that we're looking at a mind control trick right there to just get everybody watching these Hollywood movies because, and this is coming from someone that loves the Marvel Comics movies. I even saw the new Avengers movie, but... You know, there's a point to be made that some places of the world don't even fully know what is and what isn't real when they see the movies, like especially the more, I don't want to say backwards, places that have been more dominated and subjugated. They don't want to even rise up and rebel against the masters because they think Captain America is going to come stop them or whatever. And maybe I'm stretching with that. It's a concept that I've heard others talk about, and I think it's very true that just like with the video game topic as well, we're running the risk of having our imaginations colonized by, like I said, filling it up with all this fiction. But not to say that fiction is all bad or even that all video games are part of the false light matrix. It's There's just a key point to be uh, you know, comprehended here that everything technological that we have in the reality is actually either developed as, as reverse engineered from some aspect of our spiritual abilities, or it's a direct plagiarism of it. So like, look at your phone. It's got a camera like your eyes. It's got a speaker like your mouth. It's got a microphone like your ears. Uh, the list goes on. Antennas on your car, they're like a form of hair. And all across the board, this entire internet thing is actually a pale reflection of the ability we have to be quantumly con connected. And by quantum, I mean, as in, our form of life that we are experiencing as humanity is like a quantum computer. And each one of us individual beings is one quant one computer on a quantum network. So what you're looking at with all the other humans around you and in your biorhythm, they're actually you. <laughs> they're part of the same biological network, matrix, mainframe that you want to call it. Same thing. And this is the real matrix, which is actually us and our connection. And so in a lot of ways, all the divisions that we've developed in our modern culture, like I'm this, but I'm not that, you know, what, whether it's sexual orientation or race or political party or what sports team you like, it's all this big division thing, leaving you to even think that you're just one being amongst billions, but actually they're all part of this same mainframe that you are. And then the reason why they're all different than you and having different experiences than you is because that way you can actually focus on one problem with your quantum fractal processor. And then these other beings have got it all taken care of with their processors. Like 
the, <laughs> you know, whether it, whatever it is you don't know a lot about, there's another being out there that's actually put in the labors to, to bring that information forward. So it's all about the more connected we can be. That's how our power is going to increase. <laughs> but there's more to say really about what we were talking about in the first and second hour, especially with the substance abuse topics. Um, I mean, almost everything we discussed here is something that I've str had struggles with in my past and I've come to new understanding about now that gives me power over the addictive aspects of this, that, or the other thing. And the most recent ones that I've balanced out for myself are cannabis use and coffee use. And man, even since 420, when we had this conversation, my cha my thinking on using cannabis is changing a lot because as my tolerance goes back way down from tapering it off, the opening and closing of the chakras that occurs when you're either on it or off it is very clear and noticeable. And also that I've been able to get more open and clear in one area or another endogenously, you could say, without the use of it. So it actually makes it that much more intense when I'm take, partaking of the substance. And I think ultimately these are good tools, especially the plant medicines, but the con seems to have developed a really strong ability to open up all these different chakra centers and really explore the self in depth without using these substances very often or or really that much at all anymore, especially the heavy hitting psychedelics. So just keep in mind that like this, your path is your own. We aren't telling you what to do and not to do. We're talking about our own experiences and what may actually help you as far as that intellectual scaffolding about how you approach one substance or another. Because if we get on a dependency level, we're making a contract with ourself that says, I need X to feel good or to have energy. And contract doesn't just mean an agreement. It also means to shrink or reduce. Because when we make contracts with ourselves, we are usually limiting our self-expression potentials through fear of repeating past or imagined trauma or fear of not having enough of this type of energy or whatever. And when we make contracts with others, it's usually because we're afraid that without the contract, we won't get a fair exchange. But if we played with unconditional love all the time, both with ourselves and with the other, then no contracts would be required because we'd always be taking care of one another. And that's what I mean about the quantum processor, that everyone else is a node in the same quantum processor as you. And our connection is what actually brings that online. Our division is what brings the functionality down to just being like, I don't know, whatever type of uh, <laughs> system we're in when we're not fully quantum, which is fully aware of our infinite power to basically experience whatever we want in the reality as long as we put ourselves in alignment to experience that and we aren't holding ourselves back. So just know that contracts tend to bind us and make us less great in magnitude and potential in some way or another. And the, this exact fear of not having enough or whatever it is that causes the contract is basically the reason that humans have religions and governments. All fear and coercion based systems basically masquerade as love false light, false love. So even when it comes to stuff that we've become dependent on that we think we're doing because we love ourselves, like for me, cannabis use to a degree is like, this is medicinal. I'm in a pretty toxic field. I think I need to actually be using this at least occasionally. And maybe when you do have some heavy duty calcification and the, the practices, the breathing practices, the yoga, the diet isn't quite getting you there for really popping out of the body or whatever it is that your current mission is, just see the framework from the outside or more clearly, then maybe you do need the break glass in case of emergency psychedelic use. But this is not a place for me to tell you what to do. Like I said, it is just like a very interesting topic for me, especially when it comes to really looking at what it means to get enlightened, because it's really a destructive process. Whenever we're talking about enlightenment, we're talking about what we should stop doing more than what we should start doing. And if there's one substance that I would probably actually say, let's just avoid altogether, besides like, you know, the 4,000 plus chemicals that we call cigarettes and somehow we encompass that in one word <laughs> when it's really so much more than one word or the alcohol thing. I want to point out the water dilution in the cells that happens. It's really interesting that you're really like disconnecting from the actual architecture inside your body that brings your consciousness in. Cause I'm pretty sure the water in your body has a lot to do with 
how your consciousness is going to work and how it's going to flow through the whole system. Because it's like your life force energy is chi, it's flowing through your blood. The blood is pretty watery, actually. And if you're diluting that with all the alcohol, then a different kind of energy is what's going to resonate with that and flow through that. And it, I was fascinated that we were talking about the uh, animal products being something that comes up for people that are on a binge drink that have tried to quit and then all of a sudden start craving it. it I'm not talking about hunting or more natural ways of consuming animal products. I'm specifically talking about the fear-filled meats from factory farming that are basically really exciting for a disconnected spirit. You'd crave that, you know, uh, not that you're the disconnected spirit, but like spirits in, that are wanting to jump on board you and use you as a platform to have experiences. They're going to point you towards that. And you're opening yourself up to it whenever really anytime you're opening up your chakras, but especially in the case where you're not there anymore, which is what happens when you get blackout with alcohol, you're just not even there. So whoever's controlling you at that point, who knows? So hopefully this didn't come across like we're preaching at you what you should and shouldn't do. Probably did a little bit, but this is us talking to ourselves and trying to understand what is required for our journeys to advance and to evolve past the veils of illusion and into our true higher potential, which is basically limitless. I mean, there's no other way to put it. And this brings me to one of the last points I wanted to talk about is this concepts of external deity and aliens going back to the X-Men thing and the fiction thing. This is definitely something that is creating leaks in your personal energy field through the fear. So the fear would be that there's something outside of you that's greater. There's something alien, there's something dramatically unknown. But if we just keep it at all itself, then we need to know nothing else. I mean, first of all, even the angry Jehovah type Allah gods or whatever, those guys are also part of self. That's something that you can immediately roll back into yourself and find the way to neutralize that. But if you're believing that, um, maybe I should, maybe I should just, just in case, put a little bit of faith in this deity, just in case that's the right one. Well, <laughs> you already lost at that point. You have to understand that it is not immoral to see yourself as the supreme being because it's a fact that in your inner verse and in your universe, you are the supreme being. It doesn't make, that's not what's Luciferian. That's not what's satanic. And that's what the controllers have been doing so much of is trying to like put one category with another category and say it's the same thing. And in fact, you're not, you're not evil if you're realizing that basically you are the child of the creator of this entire cosmos or child of the cosmos. So therefore you're the cosmos is not, is it not the case that your parents who are humans, they made you and you're a human. So even in the scriptures that people are stuck on a lot of times where it says that humans are the children of God, well, then that would mean they're God or gods. So let's be really real about this, that we need to, first of all, not be scared that we're going to face some sort of wrath or judgment if we do actually fully embrace our power as the universal creator or universal creative force, you know, you aren't the universal creator in this incarnation, but the spark inside you is the same as the all spark is the spark of creation itself. So the cosmos made you, so you are the cosmos. We got to always remember that and not get tripped up on it. And also not <laughs> the big thing that's going on in the new age movement right now, more than ever. And uh, I've even been guilty of it myself, but I'm really coming to a better realization of what's going on is that this notion of the aliens either coming to save us or coming to destroy us or currently enslaving us or currently destroying us or the idea that the elites are part alien. Mm, put the brakes on all that. I'm fine with, you know, I rep me personally, I could say I represent the ideas of like the Arcturian energy and some things that people channel from that part of the cosmos that is somehow connected with me or that I come from. I'm cool with that because that's like saying that's part of me, that's self, that's not making a separation. But when we're saying like, oh, the Pleiadians or whoever are coming to rescue humanity from the evil Draco aliens or whatever that all these, you know, David Wilcock type people get into. Let's think about this here because now we've suddenly traded one deity for another and the new deity is the whatever the savior aliens are and 
the new devil is whatever aliens are somehow corrupting or enslaving humanity. So, whoa, put the brakes on that and realize that is the same type of program that's being played out against the third world nations where they watch our Hollywood movies and be like, oh man, the American military will crush us if we even f- do anything. But actually, you know, the real, the real power they've got is in the fear of people's minds, the fear that people have that there is some all powerful external force that's going to squash them if they do something wrong. And you've actually been indoctrinated with this since childhood. The first one that they gave you was Santa Claus. He knows when you've been naughty. He knows when you've been nice. You look into the profile of this dude and he ends up being like the Krampus character that they make the horror movies out of. But worse, you just go look on Wikipedia, the brother's grim uh, explanation of where the Santa Claus being comes from. And you'll realize that this is why the external forces that work through fear and work or are empowered by our fear and basically only work because of our fear are after our kids. And it's the same, like I said, the same profile as the super creepy, weird origins of the Santa Claus character. And the alien thing, believing in the external savior of aliens is the same as believing in the external savior of Jesus or Buddha or whatever. If you're looking for a savior, you're going to keep, you're going to be looking forever. But if you realize that even the word Messiah etymologically meant just like a rebel against the evil empire, then you're the Messiah. You can be that. You can be the savior of yourself and you're the only one that can. So it's very important to know that. And also to the whole idea of the Chthonic or entities, like we talked about Hakan seeing in the plus extension these sort of cephalopod aliens outside of the earth that are possibly coordinating the whole control system matrix, false light matrix. Well, let's even break that down. The whole idea of chthonic, that even, that word actually is referring to subhuman beings. So right there now we're actually connecting into racism. And if you, if you really get into finding the occult aspect of life, then you'll see that everything is just these stacked correlations. And so when we have this idea of aliens and horrific, monstrous, subhuman beings out there that are somehow preying on us, well, it's not that far away from a, a white person thinking that black people are out to get them or vice versa or any racism. It's the same thing, especially because all those people that have racist problems against each other, they're all humans. So they're actually all part of the same family or being or network. Well, guess what? Everything in the cosmos is mental, is mind. You're a part of it. It's a part of you. It's all generated from the same force. So even if we do run into these crazy cephalopod beings out in the cosmic oceans, well, they're part of self. And even the guy that came up with the concepts of like Cthulhu, have you heard of HP Lovecraft? He's actually pretty much the main inspiration for all the Hollywood science fiction that has come in the last hundred years. Believe it or not, it's true. And like I said, this, all these movies, all this stuff about, you know, the the end of days that's going to come about, whether it's from like a religious standpoint or a climate change standpoint or the aliens invading or a big world war. All of that is the fear. That's the fear program, keeping us in division, keeping us in us versus them. But if we just know all is self, then we start moving and collecting ourselves back to the prime timeline of ourself where no matter what's going on out there and whatever energy is coming at us and trying to scare us into thinking that something is inevitable, guess what? <laughs> we know it's not. That's time travel. That's actually your quantum processor is to actually be rooted in your intentions for your future, acting out on those intentions, thinking on those intentions, speaking those intentions, getting all that in alignment. And it doesn't really tend to matter what's happening in the external at that point, especially the further you go down that path, you become more and more insulated self-reliant, not 100% self-reliant on just you individual ego self, but self-reliant on your entire tribe that's also in to alignment with all itself. So let's ditch the whole Cthulhu, Chthonic, subhuman concept, making us afraid of this, that, and the other thing. It is all mind control. The action heroes and movies about American superpowers are definitely mind control. Don't let controllers fool you into thinking that they're the aliens and they control sectors of the galaxy far beyond your imaginings. Don't even be tricked into thinking that there are sectors of the galaxy far beyond your imagining. Because guess what? You're the cosmos, so it's all inside you. It's not actually far away at all. It's right here. So 
that's my that's my wrap up on this whole topic. Uh, thanks for letting me just go off on it. I clearly had a lot still in mind about what we've discussed. I do hope that I didn't like burn you out on checking out the plus extension and signing up because you're really missing out if you're not on those. Even the last 50 have all been awesome. And also encourage you to go check out the first episode with Hakan. I did actually put out a remastered version of it to improve the audio quality because our first call was not super clear. And a lot of that is because I was newer at podcasting even just a year ago. I don't know if you've been following me long enough to notice, but I think the sound quality is getting better and better. So I'm trying. (laughs) But the thing is, everything you see me doing here is me. Everything with Interverse is me. So not to get like egotistical about it, but it's a lot to do. It is a massive labor, as I started off saying. And the, the least I could get away with for myself and my mind and like justify asking you for or the most, I guess, is $5 a month because I'm aiming to put out four or five shows a month. So if that sounds fair, then you get an extra hour, so two hours of show, eight uh, eight to 10 hours of show total for $5 a month. That'd be awesome because it's going directly to support me and help me get out of the false light matrix that I'm in where I still have a, a job that I have to go to at an office and spend a lot of my time there just to be able to bring this to you and still maintain the level of lifestyle that I'm currently able to do for my health that what that requires, you know, I'm not cutting any corners where I can avoid it. So, and I think that that's wise that maybe you should consider that too, because whatever you invest in self is going to return in a, a different form of wealth, which is your health. And that actually is a great segue to something else I want to tell you about. You've probably heard me mention secret energy on the show before. I'm pretty sure I've talked about secret energy today on this episode with Hakan. Hakan and I even met because of Secret Energy. So this is a network, a tribe of, you know, very like-minded people following the same maxim, all as self, and massively aided by a particular content creator named Seven Bomar, who has cracked these shells and brought us a lot of information from the great beyond. (laughs) Not that he's like the one to follow, the thing that he's always harping on to is for us to empower ourselves, raise our vibration, for lack of better words, and then begin to assist the tribe in doing the same thing. And even at the beginning of me making this podcast, that was a big goal for me. And as I got more and more into the stress of thinking I needed to have X, Y, and Z perfect with the show and putting so much work into it, started letting some of that slide. And now I'm back on quite a bit of investing in self beyond what I've just been maintaining, which is an improved diet. And that actually has been massively helpful, but now I'm ready to start supplementing with some more powerful tools and getting more into cleansing. And all of these are things that you can actually find at secretenergy.com. And what's also really amazing about this group is that they have an affiliate program that you could join. And actually I'll link this in the show notes. And from now on, I'm going to at least mention this and don't look at it like an ad per se, because it's not... You know, they're not paying me to make this statement, at least not directly, but this affiliate program that I've joined and that I would love for you guys to also join allows for us to get a 9% commission on anything that we recommend to someone else that they buy. And it comes as simply as that if you follow the link in the show notes or from interversepodcast.com where it says secret energy on the links at the top, follow that and check out the shop. And if you buy anything through that shop that will almost undoubtedly help assist you in raising the vibration in whatever field that you're trying to make progress in because there's a lot of different areas of assistance in their supplements. Whatever it is, go go check it out, go try it, and even use the coupon code specialist and get 15% off each product the first time you buy it. So what you can also do is become an affiliate yourself and start getting the 9% commission for things that you direct people towards that can really help them. By all means, try out the things for yourself first. And if this sounds like interesting, some of the products that I've been recently working with, if you've heard of Shilajit, which is a type of like fulvic acid mineral compound, like 85 plus minerals, really good for the body. And I haven't fully... in. I haven't fully invested in researching all the way, the full power of it. Some of it I'm taking on trust and other people that have tried it and said, yeah, it's definitely helping me out. But I think it even helps detox from certain types of poisoning that we get just in our atmosphere. So Shilajit is known on the website as the destroyer of weakness. 
I think it definitely is a good product. That's one that I recommend. Another one I'm working with are super high quality, pure magnesium crystals. I've been putting in baths and been putting in lotions and creams and stuff and in soaps. And that's really helping with the muscle recovery and relaxation. And the profile of all the things it can do is crazy. Probably thousands of functions in the body are helped by magnesium. So what you can get at Secret Energy is the Breaking Bad level, like Walter White chemist level of uh, these magnesium crystals, a lot better than the Epsom salts or whatever that you might get at your Walmart. So, <laughs> and I think it's better than the powdered magnesiums that I've tried from health food and supplement stores around my area that were even good sources, but I, this is the best I found. So that's just two. I'm not going to ramble on about Secret Energy forever. Just wanted you to know. You can support the show by making purchases through my link, and you can even get yourself generating some karma-free wealth by doing the same thing, because if you do become an affiliate, you don't have to stock anything. You don't have to invest anything. You don't have to ship anything. All you got to do is direct the person to the site. If they make a purchase, then you get the commission. So if you're interested in doing that, like I said, check the link in the show notes, but better than that would be become a plus member because, well, I won't say better. Because as much as talking is good and the knowledge can be really empowering and helpful, you're always going to see what the knowledge is telling you through the lens of your own filters. And a lot of the products on Secret Energy are about clearing and cleansing those filters. And so then you're going to get a clearer view of the truth, which is always in front of you all the time. <laughs> so it's good. I, I do recommend that. But also I recommend Plus. Let's just say do both. Uh, it'd be awesome. And absolutely don't forget to show Hakan Hism some love on the internets, Instagram, Facebook, all over the place. He's got a lot of websites that I've linked in the show notes here. Hakanhism.net, universal-transmissions.net. His Facebook, his Instagram, his Etsy, and he's got a Patreon. And I've linked his previous appearance here on Interverse. Last but not least, aside from thanking Hakan infinitely, is a big thanks to you for checking out the show, making it all the way to the end, despite what a labor it probably is to even consider some of these topics, because it's a lot of it is stuff that's near and dear to my heart, especially like with cannabis and changing my relationship to it. I do appreciate you letting us be in this space of healing and balancing together. And also shout out to Nyris who is the music I'm about to play on the outro here. So soundcloud.com forward slash Nyris or check that out in the show notes as well. The link to him if you dig the song you're about to hear. And that's it, guys. This is actually absolutely the longest outro I have ever recorded. So definitely stoked that the labor is complete and that I get to deliver this powerful message to you guys. Thanks for being with us. Hit me up on whatever social media you want to get in touch with me about anything. I'd love to hear from you. Don't forget, wherever you're listening to this now, you can subscribe to Interverse on SoundCloud, Spotify, iTunes, every other podcast platform and, and player and app, and as well on YouTube and BitChute. And I'm on steamit.com and minds.com. There's a lot, a plethora, a plethora of different places you can connect with me online. Or last but not least, just shoot me an email, chance at interversepodcast.com. There's more to come with the podcast very soon. Lots of expanding and ideas for getting to connect with you guys more. And I'm looking forward to what the future is already bringing and happier than I've ever been, especially with my creation of this podcast, but just with myself in general. And it's Crazy to think that the last time I talked to Hakan was a year ago because it seems like things have developed so far since then, especially with the podcast. And it's it's quite amazing. We're we're in a powerful time. I hope you're all feeling that as well. The energy of this year is just whoo. For those of us that are on the ascension path, it is becoming like a rocket instead of a, a jog. <laughs> so thanks for doing that. <laughs> thanks for ascending. Thanks for connecting the dots in your own quantum processor to become the true master of your own universe and that you're a generous master and that realizing that freedom is self mastery and nothing else. And it's not about self control or mind control, but it's about being in the flow. And that is a whole different topic. And I better stop now before I go another 10 minutes, but I love you guys. Thanks for being with me, wholeness and harmony. And I'll see you in a week with a conversation with Zane Daniel, the writer of the comic book righteous, which you may have heard me talk about on social media Really excited for a talk about comics and more with Zane. So talk to you guys soon. Make sure you subscribe, leave a review on iTunes. If you like the show, do whatever you can to share it with your friends. And of course, sign up for Interverse Plus if you're not. Love you all. Take care. Take care.